Hi, this is Emerald and welcome to the Diamond Net. And today I'm going to be reviewing the book The Undiscovered Self by Carl Gustav Jung. All that coming up in this video. Now, The Undiscovered Self was a book written by Carl Jung, and the latter years of his life, it was written in the 50s, and he died in 1961, so he already had so many different things that he had already published before that, and he was very well respected in the field of psychology, the field of analytic psychology specifically, and instead of Freud, who kind of boiled everything down to the sexual instinct, Jung boiled everything down to the religious instinct in people. And so in this book, it is kind of a cautionary tale against communism and how like the average everyday person kind of goes unconscious to themselves, but they think that they know themselves and it makes them incredibly vulnerable to uh, being susceptible to the powers that be. And at the time that was communism. And so basically he recommends self-knowledge and a uh, self-exploration and like a rigorous self-examination in order to counteract those forces. So instead of some who might say, oh, we need a counter-revolution, we need to completely like tear the floor out from underneath socialism and come up with this, uh, this magical utopian uh, political system, he, made, he merely said that, no, we need to take away the powers of communism um, by actually getting people to have self-knowledge. Now the main point that he makes in relation to this is that when it comes to the religious experience that becomes the only counterbalance to man with society. And so basically you think of the unconscious, the areas of ourselves that we don't know, as our only medium for experiencing that. So he's saying that uh, these types of experiences aren't to be found outwardly in a book or by adhering to moral structures. They're to be found inward by ruthless and unscrupulous um, exploration of the self. Now, three of the main institutions that he said could kind of stand in the way of us getting to these particular instincts and this particular form of knowing that would be so powerful in guarding us against uh, communism, specifically, but more so imperialist powers, are the scientific institution, where he acknowledges that there are so many advancements in science, but he says that, you know, oftentimes through intellectual laziness it becomes kind of a cutting off point. And he gives the example of like everything being kind of boiled down to a statistical norm. So he says, what about if you took all the pebbles in a particular pond and the average weight of all of those pebbles is 35 milligrams, you know, un it's unlikely that you're going to pick up any of the pebbles from there that's going to be exactly 35 milligrams. So he says that we need to look at the individual facts and that science can sometimes stand in the way of that. Now he also says that on one hand, while religions can be a great uh, tool for accessing that unconscious, numinous aspect of ourself, that if religions merely uphold the standards, then they become just like the state in that they are just kind of usurping that internal thing. So he says instead of trying to um, kind of conform yourself and think narrowly in terms of what your particular religion uh, advocates, to go inward and really be honest with yourself about what that means to you psychologically. And of course the state communism itself actually used the religious instinct of people by undercutting the, the actual religions and kind of putting itself in their place. So the state kind of became like the god entity for people. So this is why Jung wrote this book, so that we can actually have an internal relationship to God and to the religious instinct through knowledge of ourselves and through knowledge of the subconscious as opposed to projecting it outward onto these powerful uh, figures that we could begin to look at as demigods if we're not careful and if we're unconscious. 
Now, I really enjoyed this book. It's a very, very short read, and I think it really sums things up quite nicely in terms of what Carl Jung's work was about, you know, his the ultimate scope for his work. Now, it doesn't have a lot of particularities in terms of, like, practical things that you can apply, and I did find the references to communism a bit dated just because that's not the reality that I live in right now. However, I think that this could very much be applied to modern day circumstances and I think that it would be sound advice for people to follow to make sure that you are very, very aware of yourself and to be making your shadow traits more conscious because otherwise if they're unconscious you're going to be able to be led astray much more easily than if you have a clear vision of who you are without any uh, concepts or morals or anything stacked on top of that. So all in all, I give The Undiscovered Self four and a half revolutions out of five. Now the reason why I give it four and a half stars and not five is not because it's not excellent, it just has a little bit of dated references back to communism, uh, but still a very valuable book nonetheless. Alright, so that's all I have for you today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have any recommendations for books that I should read and review, please post them below. Also, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Otherwise, that's all I have for you, and until next time, keep becoming more you.